This week in economic history, January the 1st to January the 7th. Welcome to the Holborn Assets channel. In this series, we look at major events in the history of economics that help to shape the world we live in today. If any of you think of an event we missed, or there's some topic on money and finance you'd like us to discuss, just leave a comment and it'll help us make the videos you want to see. Launch of the Euro On the first day of the last year of the millennium, or January the 1st, 1999, as it's more commonly known, the Euro launched. It was a hugely ambitious project, one that had been discussed since before World War II. However, it wasn't the first time that Europe had introduced a single currency. In 1865, France, Belgium, Italy and Switzerland formed the Latin Monetary Union and created a currency of gold and silver. The two metals were given a fixed value to each other, 15.5 gold to one silver. But the currency was tied to the market value of these precious materials, which ultimately is what caused the project to fail and be abandoned by the 1920s. The euro launched in 11 countries as a digital currency in 1999 and then as physical cash in 2002. It lost a lot of value after launch, falling as low as 0.82 against the dollar after beginning at 1.18. Its peak against the dollar was up at 1.60 after the subprime mortgage collapse in the US. The euro is now used in 19 of the 28 European Union nations. Apple incorporates. In April 1976, Apple was founded by Steve Jobs, Steve Wozniak and Ronald Wayne. But when they were trying to raise money to manufacture the Apple II computer, their new investor, Mike Markula, advised them to incorporate. So they did on the 3rd of January 1977. However, Ronald Wayne opted out and sold his 10% stake for $800. If he'd kept it, he'd now be worth around $75 billion. Apple revenues grew incredibly rapidly, doubling in size almost every four months for the first five years. When their shares went public for $22 a piece at the end of 1980, it was the biggest stock market launch since Ford in 1956. It created 300 millionaires that day. Jobs left in 1985 after a power struggle with the board and the company went in a very different direction to how we think of them today. Modern Apple is associated with user-friendly consumer products, but in the late 1980s, they were focused on being a very high-end power computer and extremely expensive. This eventually backfired and the company declined in the early 90s and only recovered after Jobs was brought back in 1997. He set the new direction, changing their name, Apple Computers Inc., to simply Apple Inc., to reflect their new focus on consumer electronics, leading to the iPhone, iPod, and the MacBook. Motorola StarTac goes on sale. Also, on the 3rd of January, the Motorola StarTac was released in 1996, costing a hefty $1,000. Now, it seems slightly weird to be talking about an old flip phone when we've just looked at Apple, given how the iPhone's influence is seen in almost every smartphone. However, the StarTac was one of the products that made mobile phones an everyday item, rather than just something for yuppie businessmen. Over 60 million units were sold, and it was one of the first flip phones helping to reduce size. It also spread the standard option of vibrating call alerts, so thank Motorola you're not surrounded by the sound of a million ringtones all day. It's rumoured that the name StarTac is because its design was loosely based on the communicator devices used in the TV series Star Trek. Motorola itself existed since 1928, manufacturing a variety of communication devices and TVs. It dominated the early mobile phone market thanks to the StarTac, but was soon overtaken by Nokia. By 2007, the company had hit financial trouble. It was split in 2011, and the mobile phone part became Motorola Mobility and was sold to Google. It's now owned by Lenovo. So, that was the week. We're sure there was plenty of other important stuff going on, but we don't want to get too carried away, right? Don't forget to subscribe to Holborn Assets, not just to learn more about the history of economics, but also for plenty of videos on making simple investments, starting saving, and just generally taking control of your finances.